Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the stream for the Triquetra D&D campaign. I am joined once again by four players this time. I think we are missing one because there were some issues with time conversions because of daylight savings. So hopefully Dalmar um, Sui will join us here soon. But we're just going to get started and... Uh, you know, and go ahead with the session because we are a little bit behind anyway. So with me, once again, I have our four players. Uh, and let's just run down uh, the Discord once again like we normally do to just remind our viewers what our voices sound like and what characters we're playing. So starting with Cooper. Hello, I am Cooper. Um, I'm playing Ryda, who is a samurai Leonin. All right. Or Shen in this universe. Yep. <laughs> Jake? Uh, I am Jake. I'm playing Silky Johnson, uh, a goblin wizard. All right. I'm uh, Mars. I'm playing Pot, who is a dragonborn Oath of Vengeance paladin. And I'm George. I am playing Ivarin, who is an elven wizard. Sweet. And I am Dimitri, a.k.a. Night of Misfortune. I am the dungeon master for this campaign, and I'm excited to be back for session six. Uh, once again, I say this every time, but it feels like forever since we last played, and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to... We're actually getting close to the end of season one, so um, very, very exciting things. So let's go ahead and jump in into our session with uh, the recap so previously on the triquetra on the hunt for the dwarven crown that they hope to be a powerful temporal anchor the party is transported to ibith the island that is now housing the ruins of the warmandar kingdom drastically underprepared for the severe winter weather the party struggles to find shelter Weathering the blizzard and frostbite, they decide to press on to Deldemir, which was the capital of the Dwarven Kingdom. They realize that the area is crawling with vampire spawn, the, the lowest kind of vampires, driven by their primal instincts. Nearly dying on the way, the group is rescued by a moose rider and escorted to a cave. Their rescuer, Kraya, presents to be... Uh, fairly condescending and skeptical of the group, but agrees to escort them to the capital that she says is overrun by vampires. With Kraya's aid, the group is able to avoid major run-ins with the vampire spawn and make their way to the Dwarven Palace. They discover it to be a lair of the vampire by the name of Damien. Damien and his group were cast out by a powerful vampire families and banished to the low grounds of Ibith. Damien claims he knows where the crown is and would be willing to share the information if the party would return the favor by dealing with the vampire family that cast them out called the Wren family. Silky remains skeptical of Damien's promises and nearly gets the party killed. However, the party manages to leave Deldemir safely and decides that they would go directly to the vampire emperor himself who is thought to be at Castle Voldrin. They return to Deldemir to try to recruit Kraya's aid once more on their journey into deep vampire territory, who eventually agrees to teleport with the party. They agree to meet near Castle Voldren to continue their quest. And that is where we pick up. As I believe you guys got teleported or yeeted once again into an area that you don't really know. <laughs> Uh, and as Silky says, as long as you guys get there, you guys get there. Which, <laughs> let's go ahead and do our first customary roll of a D100 as you guys go through the familiar to you guys by now teleportation tunnel. Oh, boy. Seventies are good, right? <laughs> Sixty-nine is the best. Game a number. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh man. All right, uh, Pi, go ahead and roll a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that's just a constitution roll. Do, do, do. Like this? Yep. <clears throat> All right, so that's a 17. All right, so you, as you are transported to this time, you know, it, it can, the, the process can get to you for sure as, um, you know, it, it's, it's not uh, too easy on your eyes, this whole process, if you're not <laughs> really accustomed to it. And uh, as you step out of the, um, or as you're traveling through um, this tunnel uh, pot, you, you feel your insides kind of turn and tumble around mm -hmm. even more than normal. And as you step out, you um, get this sudden onset of vertigo and uh, you actually throw up on, on exit, but you m find yourself safely next to the rest of the group. Um, as you look around, however, you don't see um, Delmar around you. Great. I smile with vomit coming out of it, like stuck <laughs> in my teeth and stuff. <clears throat> Just wipe yeah. it off. Oh, gross. Is, uh, did he come with us? Did he, did, is he? he you saw him getting Delmar? sucked in with you. Oh, he probably shit. got stuck somewhere. Oh, all right. Well, looking around, do I see any like shiny metal bits sticking out of the ground or something? I know. Last time this happened, someone was lodged in a tree and almost yeah. died. <laughs> you can do a perception check. You do not spot anything. Well, he's probably dead. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think again, last time it was not great. Uh, but if we can't see him, then we have no idea how to. Because this, this is what happened last time, right? Like we had to. We spent all this time trying to find him, and he was just fine. Yeah. All right. Well, I think he'll turn up eventually. Why we can don't... leave like a little note here, like. If he, I'll tear out. I'll. I'll. Uh. I will. Do I actually have? I was gonna say. I'll tear it up a little. Um. I will tear out an, em an empty page on the back of my spell book and just write down on it like Delmar. Uh. Hope you're okay. <laughs> says, and then and then I'll just I'll just like I'll just like pin it to a nearby tree. <laughs> Isn't that a little indiscreet? Maybe like an arrow <laughs> pointing south or something. Oh, that's a good, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll, I'll point and draw an arrow pointing south. Also, fast forward I'll, thousands I'll, I'll, of I'll... years into the future, a lonely adventurer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, while wow. paper is still there, thousands of years later, it's magic paper. It's good it's paper. Magic. It's a moleskin. <laughs> <laughs> It's made out of actual mole's, mole's skin. <laughs> All right. So other than that, you guys look around and you uh, find yourself to be at uh, basically on a on a wide cliff edge. So like there's a path uh, winding through the mountains. And in the distance, you actually see a, a very big spire um, that kind of pierces the, the sky and... It's almost like a beacon in front of you amongst this uh, still kind of snowfall that you've been uh, going through. Although it's nowhere near close to the blizzard you guys have experienced. And uh, this is the the castle that stands before you on uh, on the mountain mm -hmm. top. Castle Voldren, I presume. Uh, wow, that's like some Disney shit. Um, yeah, definitely nice. I'm going to summon that. my steed. Just I'm going gonna, gonna to nudge... Uh, I'm going to nudge... Uh, if Aaron be like, I told you these guys would be better to deal with. Look at how nice that castle is. That's not the castle of a bunch of like dingy, like like hobo vampires. That's the <laughs> castle of some classy vampires. I mean, I, I how do you know they built it though? Can you? They they might have. Can you just, just not? Can you? Why, why can't you just? Why can't you just agree with me one time? Like, unbelievable. You're always you're you're always like okay. Anyway. I'm sorry, but you just get too excited and you don't think hard enough. I think that that's a nice castle. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume... That is a nice castle. I like that castle. <laughs> I like that castle. Uh, I think, I think, well, it doesn't matter what I think. I think we'll all see when we get inside that these will be, these will be a different breed of, of, of individual. 
I'm confident. Know, it of sounds that a little happened. racist to me, but let's get going. <laughs> no, as I follow him, like I'm like I'm like no, you guys all knew I meant like 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 bearing, right? Like that kind of breed, breeding. <laughs> <laughs> guys, wait, 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 wait. Are we supposed to be meeting up with <clears throat> what's her name? At, at the gates, right? Oh, at the gates. Oh, okay. Let's go to the gates. <laughs> I didn't know if we were supposed to be meeting up with her beforehand. I she, she'll, she'll, she'll find us. Didn't she teleport or something, right? She could teleport? She, she said she was going to, I thought. <clears throat> oh, right. That's true. All right. So you guys uh, start approaching um, the castle, and you're not too far away from it, and within a a few minutes, you you notice uh, Kraya behind uh, one of yes. the trees waiting for you. Uh, do a wave. You made it! Uh, did you have a good trip? <laughs> yeah, no, not too bad. Your, uh, your dragonborn seems a little sick, though. He always looks like that. Uh, it's it's uh... <laughs> yeah. You, you get used to it. He has um, RSF, resting sick face. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Um, I like yeah. put on an extra sick looking face. Looking at that. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Uh, so uh, you, nice you haven't you haven't happened uh, happened to come across Delmar, have you? Your or, uh, your stone friend? No, I have not seen him. Mm. Mm. Unfortunate. I mean, I know his eyes are a little droopy, but I don't think he's stoned. <laughs> you know, sometime when we're past this, you need to tell me how, how exactly you guys teleport as a group. Uh, I just shrug and I say, science. <laughs> magnets. Ah, Magnets. <laughs> Yes, I think very, it has something to do with magnets. magnets. Very descriptive. Very descriptive. Might have to do with the magnets. Um, so, while how long have you been here? A few minutes. We not oh, too long. All right. Um. Well, shall we? Entree. Did we just knock? I think that's polite. Yeah, I'm not so sure how like effective sneaking would be. I mean, looking at this castle, can we see like are there a lot of lights or torches burning? Uh, do we see any guards or any sign of life, or does it just kind of look barren? Um, the castle definitely looks to be well kept. Um, there are some crimson flags flying on top, uh, banners hanging off the side. Um, you don't see any lookout at the top of the walls or anything like that, or outside the gates. Um, the gates themselves uh, appear to be shut, however. Hmm. Uh, um, I, I suppose the custom in this situation would be to approach the gates and show Talk. that we come in peace, right? I mean, we're here for a diplomatic solution, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely. Ideally. Yeah, so... Make sure your weapons are put away, and let's just saunter on up and see yeah. what happens. Let's do this thing. I'll, I'll put on my most diplomatic saunter and, and approach the gate with, with the party. <laughs> uh, all right, so as you approach the gates, you don't see any, any signs of anything moving on top of the walls. You don't really hear anything either. And uh, as you approach uh, the gate, everything is silent. What do you do? Uh, hello there. General Kenobi, hello there. <laughs> all right, well, it's all quiet, Is there, guys. like, uh... Does there... the gate look like it might have electricity in it or something? No, but there's a big brass uh, knuckle on it that you oh. imagine you can... Uh... Oh, let's knock. knock the hell out of yeah. that thing. All right. So, yeah, you lift it up. And for in reference to Silky size, it's probably the size of your face. Um, oh, damn. <laughs> and uh, you uh, you make it obviously makes a big sound as you um, knock it on the metal part of the door. 
It takes mm. a couple of minutes for you to hear anything, uh, but eventually you hear from the other side of the gate, who goes there? Uh, Silky Johnson and... <laughs> Uh, and friends. And and the esteemed uh uh, uh diplomatic core of Maros uh here to uh request uh audience with the king. Uh <laughs> <laughs> if Arin looks sideways at, at Silky and kind of under his breath says diplomatic core. <laughs> I, I, I just, I shrug. I'm like, like, I don't know. I didn't, you guys need to talk more. You, um, you hear a bit of a scuffle behind the door as, uh, you feel like there's a big beam that is being removed from it. And, uh, the door slightly opens or the gate rather slightly opens uh, a tiny crack and to your surprise, uh, you see what appears to be a bear standing in uh, in the crack. <gasps> uh, he says, uh, "So you cute. do you do know you're at the step of Castle Voldren, home of the Emperor of the Vampires." Uh, did I say king? I meant emperor. Yes, it's a translation issue. He's yes, <laughs> we don't we don't speak the 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 local tongue well. You will have to. Common is me. his second language. Please, he, he's quite <laughs> he's really. I mean, he speaks very well, but you just occasionally he has a few quirks. You have to forgive him. It's true. It's true. Hmm. You wish to see the emperor? Uh, yes. I'll I'll nod in affirmation of that of that query. Uh, make a perception check. Oh fuck. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oops. I'd like to make I'd like to make one too if I can because I'm. Sure. Uh, you can have two. I'm a little squeaked out. <laughs> oh, worse. <laughs> All right. Damn. Man. Um. <clears throat> he uh kind of he he looks behind his shoulder and uh, back at you. Well, if you wish, certainly I will uh, escort you. And uh, he opens uh, the door a little more. And as you get uh, a little bit more of his, uh, I guess, body into view, you see his clothes to be fairly tattered, although certainly trying to present himself as nice as possible. Uh, you know, with this crimson cloak and um, some basically rags underneath, though. <laughs> and you also see, um, like, his arms kind of covered in in a little bit of blood and, and scars and, and whatnot that have, you know, healed and dried up. But you do see kind of um, some bruises even, um, even though, like, <laughs> like, there's clumps of hair missing and you definitely, like, see um, some... Uh, what would the the word for it be? Um, I guess damage, <laughs> flesh damage uh, on him. So he how like pretty fresh damage? No, most of it is healed for what you okay. can see. Yeah, um, yeah, various ages, various states of healing. Um, yeah, and on on his ear, you do see like this um, this metallic ring out of that just kind of sits there that's kind of out of place but there um and uh he turns around and like slowly um with a limp starts to lead you towards uh, the main body of the castle itself mm -hmm. okay the limp is a little disarming because for a second i was like oh shit vampire bear with opposable thumbs that's terrifying <laughs> <laughs> Uh, truly, right. truly a power to be reckoned with. Well, uh, yeah, let, let's go ahead and follow him. As we're walking through here, can we? Can I just like sort of uh, take a mental note of like if there are any other guards that we pass by, or like 
important looking, I don't know, doors or anything. I just want to try to be like, like trying to learn the like layout of this kind of courtyard and castle as we're going through it. Yeah, for sure. As soon as you step in into the courtyard, you um, realize that it's definitely has more inhabitants than you probably thought. Um, you see um, some clearly vampires skulking around, um, you know, walking around the courtyard and you see uh, some homes that are detached from the main part of the castle, suggesting that it's more of not quite a city, but definitely a bigger type um, outpost or castle mm -hmm. um, than uh, you would probably have thought initially. Um, and definitely as, as you stand in the center of it, you realize the scale of it a little bit more, whereas when you were approaching it, it was more of looking like a little bit smaller. And... Um, yeah, so the, the gate that you've entered, though, is the main kind of entrance and exit. There you don't see any other ways mm -hmm. to go in and out. And you do see many buildings on your way through. And as uh, Groff, or sorry, you don't know his name yet, um, as the bear person escorts you through the courtyard, um, you definitely get some stares from, from this vampire folk. And you do see some more... Uh, bearkin around around the courtyard as well. Um, oh, so cute! Most of <laughs> which um, there isn't a whole lot of them. Uh, most of which are kind of behind the vampires. They're they're oh, coming no. with and like they're carrying shit and like doing different things, which suggests so, to you probably um, slaves. Some kind of servitude, yeah. Um, and yeah, so the the bear you're with. Um, continues to escort you directly to to the gates um, outside which there is um, a, fe a female vampire standing with her arms crossed and as uh, the bear can approaches her he does a uh, very low bow and, and says uh, these travelers wish to see Emperor Waldron and uh, as a as a, as a completely out of character statement, um, I want to free all of these bears. Oh, 100%. They, they I've are, already decided they, that. They are just, they're forest puppies and they must be free. <laughs> um, just taking a step back, can Pot, uh, can I do like a charisma roll to just small talk uh, the bear and ask the, the lovely bear man? like what his name is and just sort of like when i see that there's this servitude sorry when pot sees when there's this like this servitude kind of thing going on i think he would try to make try and make a connection or see that there might be like a possible connection to be made with this bear person that might be might bear fruits later on like uh, might be useful later on <clears throat> just while uh, we're walking towards the like towards the the door i don't know how long that would be like maybe it's a couple of minutes or something but yeah, so you notice he keeps uh, his responses or his um, statements brief, and when you ask him what his name is, he just says Groff. Groff? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to like have a dialogue with him right now because we've gone. Past yeah, it, and but, he definitely yeah. doesn't initiate anything. Um, yeah, and... but if you could imagine like Pot just talking at Gorf or Gruff. <laughs> The, like through the walk being friendly and you're like ah friendly bear man what is your name you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah yeah so he unless you ask him direct, something directly um, he remains silent as he approaches the, the female vampire and uh, she takes a, a second or two to look over you guys and kind of keeping her chin up almost looking down at you um, and then says uh, well accommodate our guests then it will be some time before the emperor can see them. And uh, still in a bow, Groff uh, says, uh, very well, or uh, of course, and uh, turns to you and uh, says, uh, if you come along with me now. Sure. Groff, do you have a, uh, you can see I have this steed with me. Um, do you have a place that uh, <laughs> I could keep the steed by chance? Oh yes, I uh, I will tie it up just over here, and uh, 
he attempts to grab the reins. Yeah, I'll I'll hand the reins to to Gruff. And uh, he just walks over <clears throat> um, a couple of meters off behind uh, one of the <coughs> one of the buildings, which you realize to be uh, a stable of some <coughs> excuse me of some kind. Outside of which there is uh, basically a pole that he ties okay. your horse to. Okay, I uh, I tell mm. my steed telepathically to like uh, just keep an eye out for us if there's if you. Anything suspicious going on, do let me know telepathically. <clears throat> Cheers, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what actually what does my steed sound like? Because we can talk to each other telepathically. <laughs> what do you want it to sound like? <laughs> I'm I'm leaving it in your capable hands. You make it up and I'll roll with it. <laughs> I think um, Mike should just continue making horse noises. <laughs> 1970s uh, Marilyn Monroe. He, he, he would say, <laughs> okay! <laughs> oh, oh, look at another owl. <laughs> oh my god, it's like a Disney character. <laughs> I love this. Okay. Um, what did we actually, did we did we pick a name for the steed yet? I don't think well, we did. Well, it's your steed. So. <laughs> Damn, that's right. Steve's I wanted to do steed. this. I wanted to do this Steve. before the <laughs> session. Damn, I wanted all of us to pick like one letter each. In consecutive order, <laughs> and then we we cycle through twice, and whatever that is, that's its name. Steve Martin. <clears throat> Steve. So. Steve Ravon. Wait, if we go, I don't, I don't know if we could do this real quick. Is that okay, Dimitri? Or sure. Yeah. Do it, should we? Okay, I'll do it in roll twenty. So I'll start. Let's just go. Let's just go down after I do H. So H for horse. So Cooper, what's your uh, what's your letter? After uh, H. <laughs> you saw you M? Like okay, so... Hmm? Wait, right. I thought it was supposed Jake? to be random. <laughs> Jake, no. Jake, it's, it's, this is going to be the name, Jake. What's, oh, what's your letter after HM? Uh, <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Mo? All right. Uh, Knight, Dimitri, Please, what do you, what do you got? call him a Hamors. <laughs> Hamors? Oh, that's Spear. cute. <laughs> Homozu. I, I like Homozu. There we go. I don't think we need to cycle around again. Homozu. There we go. That's the horse's name. <laughs> there we go. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Well, I thanks mean, very much, Homozu. I, I do kind of like, I, I want to play around with this a little more, though. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Steedy Dan. <laughs> Steedy <laughs> Dan. Yep. yep. That's it's either Dan Homozu. <laughs> it's either Homozu. That's its that's its true epic name, but commonly known as Steedy Dan. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yes. <laughs> okay, done. It's locked in. All right, thanks, Steedy Dan. <laughs> All right, so uh, Graf leads you up into the castle, um, and you instantly. You know, th this whole castle kind of is adorned in this, or not adorned, um, built out of this lighter colored rock, which almost resembles marble, um, but not quite there. Um, and as you enter the, the castle itself, uh, or the palace itself, um, <clears throat> you realize that it's, it's very well built, even more so. And uh, inside, you actually do see... Um, you know, actual marble, gold, and uh, this crimson kind of layout um, from the banners and, and whatnot, um, which you're initially mesmerized by. Um, you haven't seen too much cleanliness like this, especially after the uh, plague has hit. So you're definitely kind of taken aback by this whole complex as you're going through it. And... Um, Groff leads you off to the side towards a big, wide um, staircase um, that leads you up. Um, mm. And uh, he says, uh, this way, please. I'll escort you to your rooms. Oh. Ooh, we get rooms. Sure. Nice. Okay. And uh, you do see some more vampires, which as you enter... Um, outside, they were fairly well-dressed, but inside, um, they're very fancily dressed, um, like 
white collars, these, what are they called? The, the wavy, what are they, what are they called? Um, not boutonnieres. Anyway, I don't know the, the name for it. Maybe, yeah, I don't know the name for it. But these like oh, wavy oh. colors that like stretch down um, mm. on, the, on the front. Um, and, that- and, and these uh, uh, crimson cloaks as well are adorned on all of them. Ooh. Gold jewelry uh, on wrists and around necks and things like that. And uh, you do still catch stairs. Uh, nobody really says anything to you as he escorts you up. And eventually, a, a couple of floors, to eventually enter what you presume to be kind of like the residential, guest residential area with uh, many rooms. And he shows you individually to your rooms, which are all separate. Tell me, tell me, Dungeon Master, is the castle, would you say this castle is nice? Absolutely. I give a meaningful glance at Avarin <laughs> and raise an eyebrow and kind of just gesture around the the general niceness of the castle as if to say, eh? Well, things are looking up, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, we're not going to freeze to death, so that's good. <clears throat> that is true. Um, yeah, so Groff shows you to your rooms, points them out, and says, uh, if you need anything, ring the bell in your room, and I will come. Hmm. Thank you very much. I very much, good do not know when you will be seen by the Emperor. He's very busy. But eventually hopefully he'll see you thank you thank you kind bear um groff uh we uh we are very uh new to these parts and i'm wondering if you can just tell us you know any useful information you might have about like this area or the emperor we'd really like to make a good impression on him Hmm. Yes, well, the vampires are definitely interesting folk, but you'll never, <clears throat> you won't find more powerful ones when, than you will here. And uh, Emperor Ambrosio is definitely the oldest and the most powerful amongst them. Mm. A- Ambrosio. Ambrosio, that's a very interesting name. Cool. Yes, Ambrosio Aldrin. And many, and many thousands of years old. Oh shit. I'm sure he's very wise then. <laughs> he doesn't respond. And um, what about yourself? How did you find yourself here at the castle? Oh, we we serve for the pleasure of the vampires. So, uh, were you born here? No, no. We come from the Four Rosen Void beyond. Okay. Uh, do I know what that means? <laughs> yeah, you know the area beyond the Iron Mountains to be called oh, okay. Frozen Void. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what's it? Uh, what's it like down there in the Frozen Void? Or past Frozen Void? Oh, it's it's not a great place to be. Gruff is thankful to be here. There is much darkness, much evil there. Mm. What kind and of evil? Oh. One day, it's one thing, another day it might be another. If the cold mm. doesn't kill you, you're lucky to survive. Mm. The vampires, for ages, have kept Vormindar safe and protected from the frozen mm. void and the darkness it holds. 
Well, that's very noble of them. Yes. Unfortunately, our our people were banished by the dwarves long ago and now live in exile in the frozen void. Some of us are taken by the vampires and are safe here. So you you want to be here? He um <laughs> he looks around a little bit and uh, says, uh, "Grow thankful to be alive." Uh, can I um just can I would you allow me to make an insight check? Is he like he's like Gruff is thankful to, Gruff is thankful to be alive? Because otherwise the vampires would kill me, or he's like he's grateful to the vampires. Would that would I be able to get that from an inside check? Um, yeah, you could do an inside check. Like, I guess did he look like he was looking around, to be sure no one heard him <clears throat> answer this question? Sixteen. Um, you definitely get that he's a little reserved in answering your questions, and yeah, definitely a little looking around, like trying be, yeah. being careful with the choice of words that he's taking. Um, but in, in terms of intent, um, you think it's like a mix, like the vampires are awful, but the frozen yeah, void is worse. It's probably like, this is better, but not great still. Oh, I mean, he's covered in scars and shit. So mm. and All right, well, we've got we some, uh, We've got some politicking to do behind the scenes later, it looks like. Yes. Are our do we just have one big collective room or do we have individual rooms? You have individual rooms. And Are they like all in the same hall or something? Yep. Mm. Okay. Okay. Next to each other. Um, are, does it seem like there's anybody else staying here besides our party? Like are there other guests waiting? Uh, you have not seen anybody but vampires. Okay. And you're not sure if they're guests or... <clears throat> um, well, thank you so much, Groff. We really appreciate your hospitality. He bows. And, uh... Turns around to go back the way you guys came. Whoa. Hmm. I want to, uh, this is out of character, I don't say this out loud, but I would like to instigate the bear revolution. <laughs> <laughs> the bear revolution? The bear revolution. I like it. I like, I'm down. I'll, I'll help. Yeah, we should do something to help them. Yeah. But, you know, after we save the world. Right. It, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like they're, they are, uh, being Pressed per se into bondage. Well, it seems like it's like a rock and a hard place sort of situation. Right. Like, like he he carefully chose his words. Like he said, the vampires. Like uh, I forget exactly what he said, but the way he said it, it made me feel like maybe they are just kidnapping bears and then gaslighting yeah. them into thinking that they're being rescued. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, and it's like he obviously uh, is not respected here. And from his physical state, like he's pretty roughed up. So they're probably, they're not treating him well. Yeah. Well, let's at least see if we can get him out of here so that he owes us a life debt. And then we have a bear butler. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. That's just like one <laughs> servitude to another. Yep. No, we treat him right. <laughs> He'd be well compensated. I believe in bear freedom. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> the freedom to come with us and help. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Just because there's money involved makes it okay. <laughs> I am also right, well. worried that... Uh, because this vampire is like thousands of years old, we might die of old age before he sees us. No. Maybe. Well, what time is it right now? 
Oh, that's um, a good yeah, it would be because you guys. This is the same day you saw Damien, I think. So yeah, it would be like late now. Well, right, I guess well, we could rest, recuperate, and come we'll, up with a plan tomorrow. We'll retire for the evening, and then, yeah, we'll we'll see where we're at tomorrow. And if nothing happens after, you know, a day or two, still haven't got that audience, then we might need to raise some hell. Yeah, fair. I get get, get some attention, you know. Do I um, mean, is uh, are our rooms also like are they guarded, or does it seem like? We're we're definitely be treated being treated more as guests than prisoners. Uh there's no guards outside your room. Okay, so maybe we can just do some investigating tomorrow too. Do yeah, we have, were we told anything about like, you know, you can go here but not there or anything like that? No, Grov didn't really say anything like that. Do we need to be careful about uh you know, sleeping through the night and or ourselves being investigated within these rooms is there any way that we can detect you know if we're being watched or listened to fellow magic users i mean non-fellow magic users hmm. <clears throat> i mean we can we can investigate the rooms for sure i mean i was planning on doing that anyway so i guess i might as well do it now i'd like hmm. to do a pretty thorough investigation of my rooms to see if i can spot any like Listening devices, magical traps, uh, you know, paintings with the eye holes cut out, anything like that. Secret passages. Just like in your individual rooms, you mean? In my rooms, yeah. <clears throat> um, you don't find anything hidden. Um, the rooms themselves appear to be like the rest of the castle. Very, very nice. Um, adorned in marble, gold, and crimson banners. Um, uh, your beds are super nice, um, like very, very plush mattress with these, um, beds with columns and the top tarp, which I don't know the name of either. Um, a four poster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And just like, if you lay on it, like you're almost like drawn into sleep. Like okay. magically so? Because yeah, I found what? out I'm an elf. Magic or it's just like the bombest bed ever? It's the bombest bed ever. Oh, okay. nice. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Well. Sorry, towards the evening um, or like in a, in a few, in an hour or two, um, Groff individually brings you meals on like hmm. these oh. um, golden platters with the the cap. Just, wow. uh, can I inspect this meal just real quickly? Because um, these are vampires. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, like, they have food? I mean, yeah. I guess the bears eat food. That's true. And they probably entertain, you know, other diplomatic parties, perhaps. I maybe. don't know. I mean, there's no one else here. Yeah, yeah. I would I would, I would, would love to expect this to be sure we're not about to eat, like, people. Um, I don't... Hmm. Maybe they just they haven't would. had fresh foreign blood for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they like, want to fatten us up. I, I, these, this is either very, very uh, polite king emperor here, or we're being like Hansel and Gretel right now. Yeah. So, do you want to like do perception, or are you just looking what they bring you? I would want to like check over the meal and see if I can recognize the parts of the meal. Like, does it look like it's a steak? Made from an animal that I recognize, or is it like human meat? <laughs> um, yeah, do an insight check then. Oh god. Fifteen. Not bad. Yeah, so it's definitely um a steak that they bring you um with like fruits to your surprise. Um and like rice. And the, the fruits and rice from. Yeah, you're puzzled. Probably what the um, bears eat. And, what kind of fruit? Uh, like it's, like we're, grapes. We're, we're, and we're apples. in a winter hellscape. How the hell? Well, how, they where they get grapes from? We're in like yeah. Antarctica. And mm. um, the meat itself, it's definitely not human. You figure probably some kind of cow or bull or something like that. 
Did we see any like farm areas nearby where they might have like mm, livestock? Not since you've been in the mountains. Interesting. There it is. Thank you for the meal, Groff. He bows. Mm, you claim yeah. to support agriculture, and yet there are no farms in your land. Curious. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat then, because it looks like that's basically just what the bears eat. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I'm probably hungry. I would eat it, yeah, even okay. if it's against better judgment. All right. Anything else you guys want to do before the night? Before the night or over the night? Uh, well, before you go to sleep, I guess. Sorry. Do you um, guys think we should have somebody like awake? awake? Yeah. Like, should we take shifts, even though? Well, I don't lose, know. We? Well, yeah, but maybe someone like one person could stay awake and just like at a time, we could take we turns. Is it, like, mechanically possible for, like, say, we just have two people in the one room, one person sleeps or the other person just hangs out, and then it's, like, swap over every four hours or something? Does that constitute a long rest? I can't remember the yeah, I mean, long rest. Because a long rest assumes people are on watch, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, you're not sleeping the whole long rest. You're doing other stuff, too. Mm. Um... I don't know. I'm very, like, I'm not trusting, and I don't think we should all just, like, go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, 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 I don't have long rest you had to sleep. Do, don't elves have the ability to do a trance specifically? Cause yeah, they can, elves. But there's a specific right. racial ability to, to long rest faster. So I yes. thought I thought you have to actually be asleep for eight hours. Mm. Or you, you have to sleep for eight hours, uh, not necessarily unbroken. I thought but, night mm. had different rules about the long oh. rest, or was that short rest? <clears throat> it was short rest. Uh, for long rest, yeah. I just always assume that you know if you're doing s shifts, you it takes basically four hours longer for everybody to get their rest in. Like yeah, as a party, fine. it takes four hours longer, so like twelve hours. <clears throat> um. Well, I I would like to uh, see if I can get some of those level three spells from. Uh, the other spell book into my own, particularly mm -hmm. Fireball, if I can. Yeah, Arcana check. Um, you're not able to get a level three, but you can get two level twos and like all the level ones or cantrips that you have left from the book. <clears throat> yeah, so just fill in whatever I don't have yet. Yeah. I would like to cast this one and the obvious recipient or obvious object is the crown so i don't think you're familiar with it so the spell doesn't reveal it mm. yeah i think you i think you have to like have seen it before yeah or and know like looked more, over like, it yeah no know what it looks like or something okay rip <clears throat> Um, well, this is just before we do a long rest, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything else I can spit out, because I did prepare that one. Mm -hmm. How long does that last? Ten minutes? Meh. Mm -hmm. um, I already had all the spells from level two and below. Damn. And Chris is with us, right? Who? Uh, or what's her name? The woman that's Kraya? with us? A Kraya. Kraya. Sorry, Kraya. Kraya. Yeah, Kraya, Kraya got her own room as well, yes. Okay. And what's her... Like, she's the vampire expert. Like, is she eating the food? Is she, like... Um, I was yeah, probably she using her as, like, a, like a basis Robert for my Earth, own yeah. uh, paranoia She ate the levels. food, but, like, she doesn't... She has never really been to the Iron Mountains and she hasn't really interacted with vampires like that. She like observed mm -hmm. them, observed the ones that were in Deldamere. Right. Yeah. So she's not necessarily like an all around vampire cultural expert. I guess so. Yeah. 
I'm just going to cast that just to get an idea. I'm probably senses overload. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's undead everywhere probably. Yeah, but like particularly like around our rooms and stuff like that. Maybe, I don't know if there's like quote empty rooms that are near us, things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, you just get, well, within 60 feet of you, like, yeah, how long does this last? It's like 20 yeah. meters. Is it just like an instant spell that just one time? I think so. Yeah. It just goes out. Yeah. Like a yeah. sonar ping. Um, yeah. I mean, like you would get like an undead <laughs> or something, but you don't detect any like celestials or anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, anything else? 60 feet is also we... fairly short. Your rooms yeah. are like probably easier, easily almost that. Okay. Du, du, du. Um... Uh. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, any, I, I'm good. We can go to bed now as far as I'm concerned. I didn't get my good. spells, but... Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, everyone's on full health, like all that kind of stuff. Like, no one looks damaged because we just teleported, so... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, uh, like, I'm just applying that we, like, uh, actually checked our rooms and all that kind of stuff. So did we decide that we're going to take turns? We're doing that one where it's like going to yeah. take us 12 hours and we'll just. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, and um, also I'll uh, summon uh, my familiar, Miog, and mm. have him like patrol the hallway for us. Okay. All right. Well, you take your 12 hours total um, and you remain undisturbed for the night. In the morning, once again, you brought food. Um. Yeah. Nothing cool. else, huh? That's it. They're just leaving us here to rot already. I guess. Um, when when Groff comes with the breakfast, um, I'd like to ask him um, if, like, are we allowed to kind of roam the castle, like, as long as we don't disturb anyone, but can we kind of walk around just to stretch our legs? He says, um, uh, feel free to to go in and about this this floor and the ground floor and uh, go outside and walk the courtyard, but I wouldn't poke your nose too far outside that. Of course. Thank you. He yeah, let's again. let's definitely do some uh exploring um yeah agreed but let's do it in um in pairs mm. or as a group oh definitely i don't think anybody should go off alone um so yeah let, let's just for now let's just stick to the areas where we're allowed to be mm-hmm and, you know, like, try to peek through doorways and stuff like that. Because uh, we don't want to raise suspicion already. We've only been here for one night. Yeah, I don't want to, like, uh, cross any boundaries unless we really have to. So, okay. yeah, let's go ahead and... and uh, I guess, can I do an investigation check for that? To, to see... Sure. Just walking around what we're able to, to glean from the goings-on. Sure. Oh, shitty. Damn, you guys are rolling incredibly. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Bad rolls today. Yeah, so you see more of the same. Um, if you go around what you've seen on your way up, just vampires going about, um, barking here and there. Um, other than that, you don't notice anything. Hmm. So, um, how long do we want to walk around for to start with? Like, 
just explore for like half a day and then I'll say I'll say yeah. you uh, giving your role you just skulk about the whole day um, and then in the evening again you kind of return and um, or like intermittently you return and then in the evening they bring you dinner again very uneventful day and nobody okay. really comes get you or say anything to you did we like pass a lot of like other vampires um, yeah, if you go around, like, they're walking around and, like, they shoot you looks, like, the moment they see you. Okay, but, anything, like, but... were the looks, like, yeah, what who, looks? who are these people? Or were they, like, yeah. hungry? Or, like, <laughs> how are they looking at us? Uh, definitely not, like, the, what are they called, the, the spawn that you've seen. They just the look hobos. at you curiously and, like, who are these people, for sure. Okay. <clears throat> But not like in a hostile way. And why are they walking about? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nobody says anything to you and nobody like tries to jump you or anything. Well, even though it's not really like natural for me, I would probably go out of my way to be like friendly to, to anybody we pass. Like not like overly friendly, but I would like wave and smile at anybody and make myself appear non-threatening yeah especially during the day like you walk around like you try to say hello or something and then like they shoot you looks um but basically they're like almost everybody's like in a hurry like walking about um, okay trying to get to where they're going and then like they're kind of taken aback by seeing you like they're just like in their own minds and then they see you like fixate on you for a second and then just go about their day got it yeah any other like bears that we come across? Um, yeah, there's a few bear kin um, around. I would, I would definitely be extra kind to the bears. Yeah, they, um, they don't really like nobody like initiates talk with you, mm -hmm. especially the the other bear kin. Do they all look as grizzled as Gorf? Yeah, they're all like some kind of like rougher wear. Yeah. See what I did there? Damn. <laughs> God damn it. Grizzled. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Shame on um, you. <laughs> this is just my curiosity. Speaking... Not really super relevant, probably. But are they all, like, brown bears? Or are there different, like, types of bears? Um, Maybe a panda no, somewhere? Actually, no, actually, most of them are, like, polar bear white bears. Oh. Yeah. Oh, polar bears. Interesting. Does... Do they all have the same kind of uh, ring on their ear? Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. 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 It's does like their Steady, tag. Does Steady Aww. Dan like see anything through the day? Slash insight check on Steady Dan. No, nothing, nothing out of place or nothing that you haven't seen. <clears throat> doesn't doesn't yeah. like what's, over here. What's he up to? Just tell us what he's up to. Busy yeah. day, busy place. Uh, just who, in the steed, steedy Dan. Yeah, he just be tied to his post all day. <laughs> just <laughs> like, tied to his post, just <laughs> eating, eating and stuff. eating hay, drinking water, man. <laughs> um, does but so steedy Dan doesn't like overhear any of the bears like talking with each other, like no gossip or nothing like this. About. Um, I guess you can do a roll for that. Um, I don't know, like perception for the horse. I don't know. Yeah. So, where are we? Perception. D and D five a war war horse was it? I think. Mm -hmm. War horse. So it's. I have no idea what its perception would be, but I can show you its stats. <laughs> uh, it would be based off of wisdom, so it's whatever the wisdom modifier wisdom? is. Wisdom. Yeah. A plus one. Yeah, so it's just a D20 plus one. Unless it's okay. trained in perception. Let's just presume. Fifteen. Um. He smells gossip. He smells gossip. <laughs> like, he overhears, like, like some, like, the vampire's talking about, like, oh, some random folk came along last night. Um, okay. But. Nothing. Nothing from the bears? Um, no, the bears kind of stay quiet and Okay. Yeah, don't say much. Um, if Pot 
comes across a bear, then he wants to ask about the the earring. Is that like a uh, a cultural thing, that kind of stuff? Like he deep down, he's like trying to figure out whether that's the that's the method for controlling the bears. Like that's what he suspects at the moment, but he doesn't want to um, like lead with that. Doesn't want to be like, hey, are you being controlled by your little earring? It's <laughs> it doesn't want to be like insensitive, just in case you know it is. A in case you are being controlled by your, by your earring. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> would want to like draw you know. that. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, hey, is that like a bear cultural thing? Just want to find out more about um, it. Um, if you ask Graf, he says uh, it's a gift from the vampires. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's very pretty. <laughs> he doesn't laugh. That was that was me. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. Well, um, should we have a, a family meeting then? And. Uh, decide how long we're going to wait and what we might get up to tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Cause, yes, you know, I, I also do, but I also, like, we can't just sit here for indefinite amount of time. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I think we also get Cryer uh, involved if she's willing and able. See if she noticed anything or she goes around with you, but she doesn't step out of bounds or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> Does she seem nervous or more, like, curious about everything that's going on? I think definitely more curious. Okay, so she doesn't feel threatened, I guess, because she can just teleport out of there. But... <laughs> I was going to say, like, she, she's not threatened. She, just, she can just, like, bamf out whatever she wants. Mm. So oh, she and aren't we also, like, on a time limit? I don't think we actually set that with with legs. I don't know. Was it two weeks? But that was on the proviso that, or the the condition that we had to wait for Cryo to walk there. I can't remember if we actually. Oh, set I think that I think we we just we went right back to the prison and were like teleport us two weeks into the future, uh, at the gates of Castle Voldren. So I don't think it's been two weeks yeah. for us. Not sure we yet. True. No, I don't think we did because I think. I think I did bring that up being like, hey, can we like time it roughly so that we know when we can just dip out, like when we can go all right. in yeah. on some kind of strategy. But then it was obviously it's too hard to control the exact moment. So I don't think we bothered. Um. Okay. Well, let's see what happens in the morning. <clears throat> I would love to see what deals we strike or don't. Mm. Yeah, I'd say I'm let's sure give it at be. least one more day before we start like sneaking into the off-limits areas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, we came here under peaceful pretenses. Like In good we should faith. At least, yeah, exactly. Like, and we have no, no reason to expect these guys are going to, like, do us dirty. Other Yet. than the fact that they're ignoring us. Well, <laughs> I mean, we just showed up unannounced. This could be, this could be normal. Yeah. yeah we did just show down. up asking to see the Emperor. Yeah, yeah. So, at any rate, um, yeah, I'd say we give it one more day, and then if they still haven't paid any attention to us, then maybe we start trying to gather some information on our own. Fair. Let's do it. Yeah, second day goes exactly the same. All right. Um, can I okay. also make another um, Arcana check to see if I can get a spell? Yep. Since we're just sitting around, right? Yep, yeah, you get uh, you get three third levels. Three third, so that's all of them then. Pot uh, asks Ryder if um, <clears throat> some point through the day, on the day that's just been, um, whether we could uh, do say like an hour of uh, language class. Oh on, right, uh, <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah. What's the word of the day, Ryder? The word of the day is grape. Grape? Grape. I can say grape. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> I'm adding this to my character sheet. <laughs> Words known in Shen. Grape. Literally, this is <laughs> yeah. so good, actually. <laughs> that can be our safe word. <laughs> grape, grape and uh, teddy bear. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> I mean, think of the conversations you'll be able to have now. Yeah, uh, very <laughs> complex communication. I I point at Ivarin and say the Shen word for grape. I give him a thumbs up. Nice. What? I'm a grape now? What? Do, wait, do you understand? Yeah, wait, he's yeah. Shen. He speaks Shen. Speak Shen? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, just practicing, friend. <laughs> that was uh, non, uh, non-exploited non from Possession 1, I think. <laughs> yeah, you, I think Ever had studied in Shen. Yeah. He went to college there. I mean, grapes okay. are nice. If, if, our, <laughs> if our end turns to Ryda and in Shen is like, why are you telling them to call me a grape? Just just let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> I'm smiling, pretending to know what you're saying, because he's like, <laughs> like, yeah, pretends, like, over-exaggerating how much he actually understands in Shen. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> if, Arin, if Arin is going to shake his head and mutter um, that uh, pot is a silly sunflower seed in Shen. <laughs> Pot smiles, nods his head, like, mm, like, thinks that you're you're not, you know, calling me a silly sunflower seed. Like, thinks you're you're commenting on how well my uh, Shen is coming along or something. You know, like he thinks it's positive. What's going on? <laughs> so he's happy. It just says grape again. <laughs> yeah, grape. <laughs> thumbs up with a grape. <laughs> In, Shen. In addition to the grape. Uh, grapes that they bring you uh, the second day they bring you some wine as well wine is it any good yeah it's pretty good actually damn you're getting okay. all these fresh goddamn grapes yeah from. where are they getting this like uh, Mediterranean wine is not fresh grapes. produce <laughs> <laughs> but they should there shouldn't be any vineyards around here that that's true yeah a little concerning so could they, they have uh, like they a be... huge greenhouse somewhere or or teleporting right a cryo right. teleport maybe or that. they can they've got something set up somewhere um so what do we what's our plan of attack then i guess for the day 3 it's well, uh, the the no no areas i really i don't want to draw attention to ourselves maybe we can get one of the familiars to go do some snooping mm um, um quick, quick question to the gm um as far as like the layout of the castle do we know where like major features of it are like where there would be a throne room and stuff like that or do we just know a few hallways no your investigation check kind of flops so you have no idea <clears throat> um what about guards that kind of stuff like militarized people no you don't on the see wall. any guards no one in like the like the they don't tower. have no like they definitely don't have like guard uniforms or anything um okay. you see like like the female vampire that you saw the other day there's like one or two on the lookout and stuff like that but like they're they're they don't look like guards per se okay honestly that's kind of strange like if this is the emperor his castle's like doesn't have guards roaming about it i find that strange that and That's he's surrounded normal. by vampires and bear servants. So, <laughs> I guess yeah, so. I, I, I don't know. He's, I don't know. If, yeah, I think the threat to him is quite. I imagine is low. That's probably true. During our two days of sort of roaming, have we like determined any like doors that are definitely worth investigating, or see areas that seem like definitely off limits? Um, that we can kind of target. Mm, not or is it, everything kind of looks had. the same? Yeah, everything looks the same, and you kind of okay. Didn't have any luck with that roll. <clears throat> um, based on the two days that we spent, mm -hmm. do we have any sense of like how much of the castle we've actually seen? Like, have we explored kind of like twenty percent of it, or does it seem like? Yeah, I think 20% would be about right. Okay. Of the castle itself. And then there's like mm -hmm. 
houses and whatnot in the courtyard and other buildings. Right. Um, I don't know. Ooh, what do you I've guys got think? an idea. I've got an idea. Can we, can we see if we can talk to some of, well, what, what are you thinking? I was thinking, I was thinking we just talk to some of the vampires around here and be like, hey, like, how long does it, often, does it take to see the, the, uh, the emperor? Like, does this take, like, weeks? Or are we, is it just busy? Or if they, like, laugh in our face, then maybe we just kind of go for our own? I mean, asking is not a terrible idea. But separately, my thought was just, hey, we should cast fly and <laughs> get an aerial reconnaissance going. Yeah, I was thinking maybe like a fam- one of the familiars could do that. Or, or we I could, could just, just do cast it ourselves. Fly and I could do it. Sure. He just wants to f- cast fly. God. <laughs> yeah, really, I do. <laughs> yeah, my just my like... one concern would be like drawing attention, but. Um... That could also work in our favor, I guess, maybe. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, I think maybe getting like an overhead view of the castle might <laughs> provide some more information. All right, so, well, yeah. before well, we do that, I would like to do a perception check to spot out any air defenses. <laughs> <laughs> Surface to air missiles. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There are just lots of missiles. Or, you know, if they have, like, a hawkery or something like that. Hawkery. Um, (laughs) They have interceptor hawks. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you don't notice any any kind of defenses like that. Um, But from your two days uh, kind of looking around and, like, observing the vampires, you have uh, seen some of them fly in and out. And also, like, one of them you saw transforming into a bat. Classic okay. vampires. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh, okay. So they're all very richly dressed, right? Mm-hmm. Were we provided any clothes? Like, is there a, a cabinet in the rooms that has some clothes in it or anything like that? Yes, there is a closet and drawers, and yeah, if you open them, there you appear to be. Um, containing a wide variety of nicer clothing. Okay, so if it's if it's not uncommon for vampires to be flying around the castle, then I'll just put on some of these clothes, and they'll think I'm one of them. Yeah. Sweet. Or does someone um, have disguised self? That would be even better. I, I do not. I do not, but can I cast like it can pot just in day two just so i'm making the most of that day two can i have gone like near the the wall let's say or like the front gate to somewhere around like the external wall is that possible mm-hmm. from the inside yeah outside you don't feel too much restriction to just like explore the outside okay can i can i do like detect magic near the the outside wall just to see if there's any like barrier or, or magic at play there sure yeah um sweet yeah you definitely feel like the whole area is magical in in some way um and the walls definitely have like some wards and protections and the castle itself like there's almost like a bubble of protection okay. and things like that yeah i'll relay that to the group and i also want to cast detect magic again on like the grape or the wine (laughs) um yeah i think you would be able to pick up traces of magic on it as well okay Hmm. so i relay that all to the group Mm, they got a magical greenhouse (laughs) (laughs) as as an aside is the food good like yeah it's really good it's really good yeah. So they have somebody preparing it. Magic. Who's either a vampire that doesn't eat his own cooking or a normal person. Um, remind me, how how long before the plague are we right now? You're not before the plague. You're during the same it's, it's time it's way as after, yeah. when mm-hmm. you started. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I just vote we stay here then. 
<laughs> Forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Campaign's over. Pot creates a little hole in his right ear. I'm yeah. ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but seriously. Um <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I guess um, unless anyone else needs me, I'm just going to wait until it's evening, dusky at least, and do my aerial reconnaissance. Yeah, yeah. and I also relay to the group that like if if there's any like photographs of the cr of the the crown in the future or anything, like I can I can perhaps maybe locate it as long as I know what it looks like. So if anyone comes across something that could aid with that. Yeah, would that be possible, Dimitri? Like, sorry, I know what? it's kind of vague. I like, if if what he said. if um, Pot were able to see like a painting of the crown, like to know sort of what it looked like, would he be able to locate it, or would he have to like, like how familiar with um, it? I mean, would you he don't see. I, I I think for me personally, I think he would have had to held it in his hands and kind of like looked okay. Away. Okay. Um, but what uh, if like we yeah. we found some like information like a book about it or something that gave like sort of like a more detailed history of the artifact or something? Like would you would help? have to like provide a description, yeah, like a pretty, uh, like a detailed description yeah. of it. Yeah, that, okay. that would okay. work though, okay. and not not just a painting, like or a picture of it. Yeah, like it would have to have a picture and a description, so like you can match okay. it and form a pretty good visual. Okay. Good to know. Oh, well, is there a library? Mm. Oh, good, good question. Not where you've been going. Okay. Forbidden there any, library. You well, mostly there any been. You mostly been around like the the floor you're on, the the first foyer essentially you were taken through, and like the outside. Okay, so when Gorf brings dinner, then hey, buddy, is there a library around here that we might have access to? Um, yes, there certainly is a library. Um, I can see if you can check it out, uh, let you know in the morning. Thank you. Kind of. Awesome. Bear. In fact, uh, Gruff, what, uh, what do you, I mean, we're, we're calling you a, uh, a bear, a bear man. Do you have a, pr uh, like a preferred? What are your pronouns? Yeah, or your, what are your, your race. Pronouns? <laughs> Gruff is just trying to figure out. Bearkin, okay. Then uh, thank you very much, Mister Bearkin. Yeah, and every time he like brings us food or checks on us, I would like to be like overly not overly, but definitely making a point to be very thankful to him and like kind, be nice, yeah. very grateful. <clears throat> Yeah, he doesn't exert too much emotion or facial expressions and just bows. I mean, how many facial expressions does a bear have anyways? <laughs> I mean, I think they can smile. Like the <laughs> like if it's an actual creature that can talk and interact, I think bears can smile. I get Okay, so it's a Berenstein bear. <laughs> Mr. Bear... Bear's thing. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, yeah, then, um, if you want to do your reconnaissance. So, yeah, uh, I'll cast fly on myself. So day three. Uh, well, or over this evening, this is over the night between day two and day three. Oh, so you want to, okay. Well, that might like, be a it's... little more because there isn't as many vampires out and about I guess well not like pitch black night though evening like I still want to be able to see yeah okay twilight if you will twilight yeah so I'll, I'll cast fly on myself and just give like a quick zip around uh, around the gr uh, eh, excuse me a zip around the grounds wearing some of the clothes from the cabinet in my room so okay. as to appear to be a vampire just out for his evening constitutional um, mental health why 
I think you can do like a stealth check, I think is appropriate here. Stealth in inconspicuous a roll. Mm. Oh Aww. boy. I mean um, I'm not really trying I'm not really trying not to be spotted. I'm more just trying well, not yeah, to be in inconspicuous, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, you definitely still draw attention even though you're wearing nice clothes like they see your face. Um, but nobody really tries to stop you if you fly or like even when you start flying, like you attract attention and whatnot. Maybe some some of the vampires are even surprised by, that you can fly, but um, <laughs> overall nobody stops you or says anything to you um, and you're able to look around the grounds just um, basically, unless you're looking for something in particular, confirming your kind of... Um, interpretation of the scale of this place um the one thing i do kind of want to in particular look out for is balconies because i figure biggest balcony probably belongs to the biggest baddest dude in the place which would be the emperor so just yeah, kind of trying to figure out like where his quarters are or where the throne room might be yeah there's definitely a shit ton of balconies and um Probably the biggest, nicer, nicest looking one is at the top of the main tower of the palace you're staying in. Go figure. All right. Um, I think that's probably enough. I only get 10 minutes of flight, so I'll come back and, and mm -hmm. just report more back to everybody about the layout of the place and where I think the emperor might spend his time. Which would be at the top of the tower, which you probably could already have guessed. So, <laughs> Joel's out of the basement. <laughs> I mean, I guess he is a vampire, so maybe. <laughs> what? All right. So in the morning, you guys are brought food once again um, by Groff, and he says, uh, "If you like to check out the library, I can escort you there." Yes, please. Yes, yeah. Okay. And he leads you um, up to the fourth level. Um, and there is a big doorway leading to a multi-level um, library. Very, very impressive and uh, definitely way bigger than the one you saw or you have at the prism. I sure hope they have a Dewey Decimal system. And uh, <laughs> you do see a couple of vampires there. Some of them have like these spectacles. Um, oh, nerd vampires. <laughs> hanging about, yeah. Uh, I ask Gruff if there is like a, uh, like a paper and uh, like a quill or something to write on the paper. And explain that I'm learning another language, so... Learning. Yeah, he directs <laughs> you to the stationery. Perfect. Free I take, paper? Yeah, yeah, take some paper and... Free, free paper. <laughs> Hashtag <Neat>. apocalypse. <laughs> no cost associated or whatever. <clears throat> um... And then, uh... It, it, yeah, I ask... Or Pot asks how um, how the books are organized. Like, how can we, yeah, how they organized? How can we find the ones that we're sort of interested in? They're organized by uh, title name. Okay. There's no like genre section. <clears throat> nope. Fiction, nonfiction. Section on like fabled legendary crowns. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, by name, yeah. Pot. Approaches one of the nerds and <laughs> <laughs> very uh, friendly, Lily, in a very friendly tone, uh, asks um, if they know, if they have any books on the Shen language um, and uh, if they have any books on... Um, like uh, the major kingdoms of Morris. Shh. Shh. 
completely shush you. <laughs> but uh, the vampire looks up from the book and says, uh, Yes, check out the H's. Ch check out the what, sorry? The ages? The, yes. History. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I will go and check the ages. I <laughs> I go to the ages. <laughs> I would also like to head over there just to see if like I don't I don't really know where to start with this crown, but history sounds like probably a good enough place. Okay. So I will also go start I go combing through I, stuff. I look back at the group and go shh and shush everyone <laughs> and walk over. Uh <laughs> Yeah, there's a big section in the H's, like, for books that say, um, history of. Okay. Fine. History of vampires, um, Vormandar, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. I just kind of flick. Actually, I'll do history of Vormandar first. Okay. See if there's books on that. And then... Yeah, there is. Yeah, check... Skim through those books to see if there's uh, like crowns and stuff. I don't know if they've got like a contents page, but is it in a language I can understand? Actually, that's the first. Um, common draconic and two words of Shen. <laughs> and two words of Shen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think these would be written. Probably, especially this book would be in uh, uh, dwarven. Dwarvish. May I be of assistance? Good fellow, <laughs> sir. I hand the book. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I'll read through that one. Skim through it, I guess. We don't have all day. Okay. So what well, are we you? Do have all day. It covers a wide variety of topics. Um, so you're just looking for the crown. Can I maybe make a history check to see if I can uh, narrow it down? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for the crown, I think it's kind of easier to, to find, um, uh, major, major, uh, major player th sort of thing, huh? Right, right. Like, I mean, if you look up like the king and like the royal family and like the power stuff, like you're very easily able to find it. Um, now is this book illustrated? Is it a picture book? <laughs> How nice does he feel? <laughs> um yeah i think this this would definitely have like a picture and a description of the crown you're looking for so i think if you read Shit. it out to um nice to pot um he would get the idea that's great and um, bada bing, bada boom. and right that's here rubbish, actually, by the way. Uh, bada boom. right here i think we're gonna take like a five to ten minute break and um yeah. Be right back with uh, the second half shortly. So don't go anywhere. Cool. We'll be right back. <laughs> 